Hey, this is Mike from the Run Testers, and this is our multi-tester take on how the New Balance Fresh Foam X 1080p13 compares to the ASICS Gel Nimbus 25. So a few quick details on these two shoes. They are two cushion shoes. These are price-wise pretty similar across the board, UK and US definitely do sit at a premium. In terms of weight, the New Balance shoe is the lighter of the two shoes and we've put up the kind of weights for UK size eight. In terms of drop, you've got a six millimeter one on the 1080 V13, a 10 millimeter one on the gel nimbus 25 in terms of the uppers you are getting a kind of flat knit one on the gel nimbus 25 a kind of engineered mesh one on the new balance 1080 v13 midsole wise you're getting the fresh frame x midsole on the 1080 v13 whereas you're getting the ff blast eco uh, midsole in the gel number 25 you're also getting its kind of pure gel technology what is there to kind of offer some kind of more stable foundations along with that kind of softer plusher feeling cushioning as well too outsole wise you're getting what new bounce calls an endurance kind of outsole uh, and then you're getting this kind of aha kind of uh, outsole on the ASICS gel numbers 25 which you can kind of see it's slightly different in terms of the, the layouts but ultimately these are shoes designed to kind of soak up a lot of running time so those are the key differences between the two shoes the kind of details you need to know let's get into the fit run test and then give you our verdict on whether you should go for the 1080 v13 or the gel numbers 25. Both shoes fit me really well in my normal running shoe size. Uh, the New Balance 1080 is actually a US 9.5 in my UK 9, so I think it might come up a little bit smaller than the ASICS, which is a US 10 in my UK 9, but actually both of them have a good amount of room in the toe box for me. Nice hold around the midfoot and heel, really comfortable padded uppers, so yeah, no concerns from me. I'll stick to your normal running shoe size. The fit of both of these, I think, I'd probably say the Nimbus comes up a little tiny bit short for me in the foot. I wished I had a little bit more room. I'm a UK five in pretty much all running shoes apart from New Balance, I'll get to that. And I just, I just wish I'd sized up an extra half size just to get that little bit of extra room in the toe. I think it does come up a little bit small. I have quite high arches and I found the fit was great everywhere else. I just wished I had a tiny bit more room in that toe box, especially because I feel like this is one of those shoes you'd wear for long runs, for marathon training, for kind of the longer distances. And for that reason, I'd always size up a tiny bit just because you don't want your toes to be squished up against the edge of the shoe. They weren't, I had enough room, I could comfortably run in it. But I think if you're between sizes, it might be worth sizing up a bit here. It's a kind of booty upper, I found it really easy to pull it tight across my foot and get a really kind of good locked in feel when wearing the shoe. It's super plush all around the collar, really, really comfortable. With the 1080 V13, with New Balance, I always go up half a size. So I'm a UK five, these are a UK five and a half. I tend, I find that New Balance always come up small. That said, this shoe doesn't. <laughs> so I kind of wish I'd just stuck with the UK five in this shoe because I have a lot of room in the toe box, probably more than I would need. So I think the 1080 is one shoe in the New Balance line that does fit true to size. Other shoes, I would always say, go up half a size in New Balance. That said, it didn't feel crazy big on the foot. You know, I was able to run in it. I didn't feel like I had too much shoe, but I would just say compared to other New Balance shoes, you probably don't need to size up as much here. Still, again, really comfortable, less of a booty upper than the Nimbus, um, but I was still able to kind of get a really good locked in feel in the shoe. Really comfortable, plush around the collar, and really nice. Both of them, really lovely, nice, well-fitting shoes to run in, just a few tweaks of sizes. I probably would have gone up a little bit in the ASICs, probably wouldn't have gone up in the New Balance. So when it comes to fit, I've run both these shoes true to size in a UK and a half, and that's exactly what I would recommend to me, they fit great. If anything, the ASICS is a little bit more roomy in the toe box, not only lengthwise, but also across the top. The uppers don't sit quite as close to the top of the toes. That creates a little bit more of an airy feel. Uh, that's not to say that the New Balance are, are restrictive in any way. Both of these shoes have got a nice amount of flex. The uppers move really nicely with the feet and you do feel like there's plenty of room for your feet to relax and do what they need to do. It's a very sort of comfortable shoe overall. It's the kind of shoe that if you've got a bit beaten up feet after a marathon, a few days after you want to go for a recovery run, the fit of these is bang on uh, 
for and the ride I actually for, for using for that purpose. So in terms of fit, absolutely fine for me in my UK size eight and both these shoes. I haven't felt like I've needed to go or wanted to go half a size up, half a size or full size down in these shoes. They feel very, very good. You know, up front in the toes, maybe it's a little bit longer than the gel nimbus 25, but it's not something that I felt too long in my time with it. I think you get good hold in the midfoot and both these shoes. It's all about that kind of offering something that's very accommodating and both fronts on these shoes really prioritizing giving something that feels very snug you know not had any kind of heel slippage you're probably getting you know a little bit more padding um in the traditional kind of sense on the heel collar on the new bounce shoe where it's more internal on the gel nimbus 25 but for me there's not a massive amount in it i would say based on my uk size 8 Going through to size would be absolutely fine in this shoe. I think they fit very, very well overall. The fit for me in these two shoes, I am a size eight, these are UK size eight, um, and they're very similar in the way that they feel and fit. I think the um, uh, Gel Nimbus 25, very comfortable shoe, nice bit of padding in it. It's quite a plush shoe. Uh, it feels quite light and breathable at the top, and it feels like there's plenty of space as well in the forefoot and a little bit of the midfoot as well. It's really comfortable, really solid shoe, not too narrow or anything like that, um, and just feels great. I've not had any issues at all with this, and I would definitely stick to my size in this shoe. The uh, 1080 V13, uh, it's had a little bit of a revamp from the previous versions. There's, It looks like a different shoe. The upper is a little bit more padded, a little bit more, more reinforced. There was like a sock design on the uh, last two versions of the shoe which I didn't mind, but I did find it was hard to get a nice lockdown fit um, and it wasn't it wasn't massively comfortable. Uh, it just didn't feel like it had a lot of padding on either. This is a, the overhaul of the 1080 V13. There's loads more padding on it. It's a very padded upper. It feels very, very comfortable. Holds the foot in place nicely. There's still plenty of room in it. There's plenty of wriggle room in the forefoot. Midfoot isn't too tight on a lockdown. So if you've got wide feet, you might be okay with this. Uh, and it's very easy to get a nice lockdown fit in. So for both of these shoes, I'd say really, really comfortable. Um, and I would stay to my UK size in both of them. I enjoyed running in both of these shoes. They're definitely, I think, good, impressive updates on the previous models you had in the rain. Tested the Gel Nimbus 25 first and just really enjoyed using it. I find it's a really good long run shoe in particular. You've got that comfortable ride, but it's not overly squishy and soft. You get a decent amount of rebound from the foam, so you can maintain a nice pace throughout a long run. The shoe feels very consistent and still enjoyable at the end of a run. It's not exactly a versatile shoe because it is so big and not exactly lightweight, but you can pick up the pace a little bit because this FF Blast Plus foam does have a little bit of bounce to it when you do want to run a little bit quicker. But certainly it's a shoe that's best for those easy runs and one that I think really excels on long runs in particular. It's probably my favorite long run shoe of the last year when you're just heading out for a nice easy run. The 1080 V13 is a softer shoe than the Gel Nimbus for me, noticeably so. It's uh, definitely a lot softer than what we've seen from the line in the past. It's very squishy foam, you get a real sink in when you land in the shoe and that makes it really, really comfortable for sure. But I think it does limit the situations when I find it's particularly useful for me. So on easy recovery, fairly short runs up to about you know, 45 minutes of an hour, it feels great. That kind of daily mooch, maybe the day after a hard session, it's a really nice shoe to pull on. It's really comfortable underfoot and the upper, like I say, is very comfortable as well. And then if you're trying to do anything a little bit more versatile or longer than that, then I don't love the feeling of it so much just because it is so soft. So done one longer run in the shoe, done at an easy-ish pace. And yeah, by the end, it was just sapping me a little bit. If you are sinking in, there's not a huge amount of rebound from this foam. I think it's less than you get from the uh, foam on the Asics. So by the end, I thought, yeah, it's a bit too soft for me. And similar feeling when I tried to do a, just a little progression run from easy to steady pace, just going through the gears a little bit, nothing too quick at the end, but it was fine for it. But certainly I prefer a slightly firmer platform on the foot myself or a soft foam that then bounces back. Something like the Zoom X in uh, Nike shoes that has a very soft feeling, but it does bounce back a bit more. This Fresh Foam X really is more of a soft foam you sink into and it's got a little bit of bounce, but not much really. It's more about protecting the body, being a nice squishy, comfortable shoe rather than really having a lot of bounce. So yeah, I think it's a little bit softer, maybe slightly more comfortable for, than the ASIC shoe for those short, easy daily runs. But then I do think the ASICs has a bit more about it in terms of the foam lasting well through longer runs in particular. So the run test, these are both definitely, definitely shoes that are best suited for easy, easy kind of everyday, comfy miles. They're both massive improvements on the last version of the shoe. I remember when I did the full review of the Nimbus, I was so surprised by how much I love this shoe. I've never really loved the Nimbus line. I found it a bit meh. There are better cushion shoes on the market. Whereas when I unbox this shoe, 
I was shocked. It feels like ASICS have given the shoe a complete facelift. It's not an update. It's a completely different shoe to what you've tested before. That said, if you're a huge fan of the Nimbus line, you will still love it. It's got that sinking comfort when you push it when you put it on. It's a really bouncy, responsive ride. I got this out the box and I went immediately. It's when I was marathon training. I think earlier this year, it was marathon training for London and I got this out of the box and I went on a 10 mile run in the rain in it and I loved it. It was kind of that perfect marathon long run shoe where you don't want to go for a run. Really impressed with this. I also was so surprised and loved the 1080 V13. I've never been a fan of the 1080 line, I think because for a long time they had that big plastic heel counter thing at the back and I just really didn't get on with that, tore my feet to shreds. But ASICs have really changed it. I like the 1080 V12 and I really like the 1080 V13. They made it lighter. I think that's always been a bit of a problem with the 1080. It felt like quite a hefty shoe. This is now a max cushion shoe, but it's lighter than other max cushion shoes on the market. And I really, really loved it. I would say I've done most of my miles and both of these shoes have been kind of easy, longer, kind of chilled miles. I would say they both have the opportunity to kind of do a tempo session in it. I think in this day and age, if you're the kind of runner who does not want to buy a shoe for your easy run, a shoe for your tempo run, and a shoe to race in, you don't have to. Both of these shoes have a good amount of versatility. I've worn both for tempo sessions. I would say that the Nimbus has got a slightly more kind of vibrant, bouncy ride, which makes it a little bit more versatile. It's a little bit easier to run quicker in this shoe, but there's no reason why you can't in the 1080 V13. It's definitely got that lightweight kind of bounce too. They're both quite similar. I would just say it's slightly livelier in the Nimbus, but they're both super comfortable shoes and I've been really impressed by both of them. So for my run test, I've done around 40 kilometers in both of these shoes, mostly easy plodding, some runs up to around 90 minutes on feet. And that's on a mixture of road, light off-road river paths. And I found them really good for those easy efforts where you just want a bit of reliable protection and all round plushness on the foot. For me in my head, both of these fall into that bracket. They're like cocoon shoes is what I'd call them. So I've also done a side-by-side -side mile with one shoe on each foot to see how they compare. And here is what I found. So I've just done my side-by-side -side mile. I've got the Asics Gel Nimbus 25 on the left foot. I've got the New Balance 1080 V13 on the right foot. Now from the moment you put these on, there's a huge amount of similarity in these shoes. You know, it feels like New Balance have made a shoe that's very much Nimbus 25-like. That's not a bad thing. Overall, I think the comfort on the foot here is equal. Both of them, great step in comfort. You put them on and they just feel nice and plush. They feel nice and sort of smooth on the foot, really comfortable. Your feet feel well cradled into that footbed in both shoes. Maybe a little bit more in the Asics Gel Nimbus 25. It's a little bit softer. It, it kind of envelops the base of the foot a little bit more, I think, than the New Balance. The major difference here, I think, even when you're walking around here is, you know, both of them have got a pretty pronounced rocker, but I think with the Nimbus, right under the ball of the foot, you can feel a little bit more like a solid sort of bulb of foam. It doesn't quite compress as far as the New Balance 1080 V13, which I think just feels a little bit flatter. So it's almost like the Nimbus give you a little bit of, if you're landing forfeit, it gives you a little bit extra kind of roll through in the stride. And you can feel it as you walk and it kind of kicks in a bit more when you run as well. That said, what you've got here in both of these shoes, as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, really big, soft, cushioned, luxe, you know, go long, go easy uh, shoes, great for recovery days. Those, these are the kind of shoes you're going to put on and just go plod around. And both of them, I think, do this equally well, actually. I think there's very little to choose between them. They're not entirely the shoes that I would choose. Both of them, I feel like they've got a little bit too much on the foot overall. If anything, I'm gonna say that I think the New Balance 1080 V13 feels like a little bit less shoe on the foot. So I've got a slight leaning towards that. But in terms of that ride, I think you're getting exactly the same kind of amount of sort of softness and response, perhaps a tiny little bit extra coming from the gel Nimbus from that foam. It just gives back a little bit earlier than you'll get with the New Balance 1080 V13. What you've got here with both of these shoes is that big wide cushioned platform to land on which makes them, I, th I think, both relatively stable shoes. Again, if we're picking hairs here or we're trying to split them, I'd say that the New Balance 1080 V13 to me feel a little bit more stable just because you feel a little bit lower to the ground in them. And again, I think that, that little kind of extra kind of bulb of foam under the midfoot makes a difference here. And the heels feel a little bit more connected to the ground. So if you're landing a little bit more sort of mid to rear flat footed, then I think you're gonna get a little bit more stability off of these off of these 1080 V13s. Weight wise, I think the 1080 V13s feel a little bit lighter on the foot as well.
Okay, so into that run test. Now, obviously, I've done a lot more running in the gel number 25 because I've had it longer. It has worked its way into my rotation. I kind of switched between this and the Saucony Triumph 21 in terms of kind of my slower, longer, easier runs. These two shoes are designed for those types of runs. It's when you're not racing, you're not running at your fastest. It's really about comfort and protection and just feeling good when you want to go out and just kind of soak up some time on your feet. Now, in terms of how they do that, I do think they deliver it slightly differently. I would say in terms of the overall ride in these shoes, I think the ride in the 1080p13 feels a little bit nicer. I've always found it a little bit flat on the gel numbers 25. You know, they're both plush feeling shoes in terms of what you're getting here. But I just found that, you know, I would, you know, I don't feel like I get this nice bouncy feeling that I want from the gel numbers 25. I don't think the ride is as lively. It's not massively lively on the uh, 1080p13, but it's just enough to feel a little bit nicer, I think for me personally. I think from an upper point of view, I do think they're both very good uppers. I think it's more traditional in terms of what you're getting on the um, 1080p13 in terms of delivering something that's comfortable and snug feeling. Whereas I think I quite like the fact that ASICS has done something a little bit different in terms of the upper here, how it feels and how it wraps around your feet in terms of padding that you're getting around the heel collar as well too. So from that point of view, I quite like that you get that. I think that's a little bit more um, nicer in terms of that feeling with the gel numbers 25. But you know, they're both comfortable shoes. They're both shoes that are plush feeling in terms of those midsoles. I think the outsoles, I mean, there's not much in it really. You're probably getting a little bit more coverage on the new balance shoe compared to the gel Nimbus 25, but it's not a massive amount in it in terms of durability. I think maybe you're probably gonna get a little bit more on the 1080p13, but I don't think it's, it's a massive advantage over what you're getting the gel Nimbus 25. You know, gripping wise, traction wise, you know, pavements, roads, probably this is a bit better suited for lighter trail stuff. You could do that here, but I think maybe is a little bit more exposed foam here on the gel nimbus 25 so for me i think the i would say the new balance is the lighter shoe well this is not heavy this is definitely the lighter shoe in terms of overall weight i think the ride the gentle kind of rocker feeling you're getting here feels a little bit nicer compared to for me is a little bit flatter in terms of that ride um and then yeah outside durability maybe you're getting it it's edging it a little bit on the new balance shoe but i don't think there's much in it overall two really good shoes i've enjoyed running in i think the New Balance has just about edged it for me in terms of the ride, but I think in terms of what we're getting, in terms of comfort, there's a lot to like about the Gel Nimbus 25, particularly if you are using it for those longer, slow, easy runs. So the run test. So I'll start with the Gel Nimbus 25 because we've had this shoe for a while. Um, the I've tested the previous versions of, or some of the previous versions of the Gel Nimbus. I was never really a massive fan. I think they were fine. I think they were a solid, comfortable shoe, good for ticking off the miles, um, nice bit of cushioning in them but they didn't really wow me. There was nothing really about them that I really, really liked. And when you compared them with other cushion shoes, I just they would just seemed like a very standard, traditional style shoe to me. The Gel Nimbus 25 has a, is a bit of an overhaul, quite, quite, it's basically a different shoe. Um, there's a, the midsole, it just feels really nicely balanced. It's soft enough to feel like you can go for a nice, comfortable, easy run or a long run. Um, and it really just feels great on the feet. You can do a lot of miles in this and really churn them out. Uh, and your just legs just feel fresh um, when when you finish those runs, but also it's not a, a slouch when it comes to running at pace as well. It's it's a relatively versatile shoe. If you look at it as a max cushion shoe, it's not going to be like a speed training shoe, but it's veering a little bit more towards the daily shoe world where that midsole is a little bit more balanced. It's a little bit firmer for me than some cushion shoes out there. And as a result, you can pick up a nice pace in it. It's got a nice fluid transition, pops you forward. Uh, comfortably and just is a great cruiser it's very comfortable to wear uh, very enjoyable uh, and it just and just works really well for longer uh, longer runs and easy runs um, I think it's a fantastic shoe it's a really one of the best shoes that's been released um, for cushioned daily runs uh, this year New Balance 1080 uh, V13 is a really exciting shoe for me because I, I really didn't like the, the 1080 V13 11 v12 i just think it was a very standard shoe the midsole was not particularly exciting or lively um and those those shoes i i just never really found a use for them they weren't really a great daily shoe because they they didn't really feel like you could pick up the pace in them they also weren't a very nice cushion shoe either because they're just a little bit too firm for me and didn't really do anything tennessee v13 is a massive difference in feel from those shoes is a, a considerably softer shoe. It, you can really feel that softness underfoot when you're running in it. Um, and for me, it it's an interesting one because I'm such a big fan of the New Balance More V3 and V4 that 
that shoe was far better for me than the, the 1080 V11 and 12, just because even though it had the same foam in, having a lot more of that um, foam in it just made it feel a little bit softer and a little bit more enjoyable for longer runs, but you could still get a nice cruising turnover in it. The 1080 V13 is, it's really a lovely shoe to wear. It's so soft and comfortable. Um, it's, as a result, it's not that versatile. You, it's not um, a shoe that really has a lot of, um, uh, responsiveness in it um, but if you're going out and you're doing an easy run uh, I did a uh, 15k in it yesterday and it just felt great it felt really nice just just plot, plotted along uh, lovely transition on it lovely smooth turnover on it and it just glides your foot into the ground nicely um, and you get a tiny little bit of rebound from that midsole foam but it is a very soft midsole foam so it's not like it's really propelling you forward it's just just helping you pop along nicely but it's so comfortable to wear so i think this is a, one of the the best updates that new balance have made for a long time and i'm, and I'm a big fan of it so these are a couple of really good shoes i think if you're looking for a cushion shoe mainly for easy cruising then they're both very strong options like i said the run test i find the 1080 v 13 just a little bit too soft for me at times especially over longer runs so i think i would prefer to pick up the gel nimbus 25 in particular because yeah, when you are getting a shoe like this, you want it to be able to handle that cruisy Sunday long run, kind of 13, 15, you know, longer than that miles uh, and feel really consistent and good throughout the run. I just found the 1080 was just a bit too soft at the end of that run for me. Neither are particularly versatile, so the Asics has a slight edge on that. If you're a runner looking for a really cushioned all-rounder, maybe a newer runner, you want one shoe to do a bit of everything. I think the Gel Nimbus 25 probably has the uh, is the better option on that front. If you're looking maybe as a first marathon shoe, then Gel Nimbus 25 would be a really good option. New Balance, like I say, just really comfortable, really soft, great in a rotation as your easy day shoe, but not so versatile. Uh, it's a little bit cheaper though than the Asics, and if you are just looking for a nice comfortable shoe for your rotation, it will do a similarly good job, I'd say. But yeah, overall, I prefer the Gel Nimbus, uh, mainly because of that performance on long runs. If you're, you know, if you're, if you're a New Balance fan, this is a shoe for you. If you've always run in Asics, this is a fantastic shoe. They're both great. I'd say that the this is a slightly livelier shoe if you do want to do tempo sessions in it, but there's no reason why you couldn't in the 1080 V13. Both excellent running shoes. I've really enjoyed running in both of them. They're both huge improvements on the last version. Normally I say in this bit of a run tester video, save your money, buy last seasons. Do not, do not with each of these shoes. They're much, much, much better than what's come before. And I really think it is, it's just personal preference. I love both of them. I'm really struggling to pick between both of them as you can hear, but I think it kind of comes down to which fits your foot better. So I definitely encourage you to go and try both on, or if you lean towards one brand, be happy with the knowledge that both are great. Um, I think for me, the Asics is probably a little bit better fitting, I have quite high arches and I find it, I like prefer that booty kind of wrap around upper. They're both excellent shoes. You won't be disappointed in either. The verdict then, well, this is a pretty tough one to call for me. Based on my test, I found the ride of these shoes to be incredibly similar. As easy day recovery shoes go, I think these are pretty well matched in all the key areas, all the things you'd look for in a max cushion comfort shoe. The step in comfort is about even, both good disappearing feel on the foot, and they both deliver good cushion protection underfoot, which makes the road disappear. If anything, I'd say that the Nimbus are a shade more responsive. There's a touch of extra return from the midsole, and I think that rocker and the higher drop helps you clip through a little quicker than with the 1080 V13, but it's margins. And I think weighing up that performance to price value, I don't really see much reason to spend the extra on the Nimbus. I don't think you get enough from it. So choosing between these two big cushion running shoes, I'd probably go for the New Balance 1080 V13 simply because it's a bit cheaper and I think it delivers a ride that's pretty much on par. So my verdict on these two shoes, it's a tricky one because I really, really like the Gel Nimbus 25. I think it's one of the best overhauls to a shoe that um, we've seen for a long time. And it really has taken the Gel Nimbus line and turned it into a shoe that everyone wants as opposed to a shoe that you might pick up um, if it if you found it in a running shoe shop um, and it worked for you. Whereas this is a shoe a lot of people really took notice of. Maybe partly because of a massive marketing campaign that, that happened when it came out, but it is a great shoe, so it's justified. And I really enjoy running in this when I'm doing uh, longer, slower sessions and, and things like that. Um, I would say for me though, that the 1080 V13 is a superior shoe. I love softness. I love a nice um, bouncy feel to my shoes. Uh, I just, I, it just does the job for me. Um, it's not the most versatile shoe in the world, but for me, most of my runs tend to be 
uh, easy runs, recovery runs, long, comfortable, cruising, slower runs, uh, which for me is around five minute kilometers. And for me, and for those runs, this is just great. I really, really enjoy it. Um, and uh, yeah, I definitely pick the 1080 V13 at the moment over the Gel Nimbus 25. Okay, so my verdict on whether you should go for the Asics Gel Nimbus 25 or the New Batch Fresh Foam X1080 V13. Now, when I got this shoe, this was definitely one of my favorite cushion shoes of the year. I've loved running in it. It's a shoe that has kind of sat inside my rotation alongside something like the Saucony Triumph 21. Now, if I had to pick between these two shoes, I would actually be going for the New Batch Fresh Foam X1080 V13. I have really loved running in this shoe. I think both these shoes are really comfortable. They offer very kind of plush kind of feeling mood soles, but I think the ride is a little bit nicer in the Fresh Foam X 1080 V13, where I think for me, my runs in the Gel Nimbus 25, while it's nice and comfortable, you know, from an upper midsole point of view, I do find the ride a little bit bland. I don't find it as bouncy and the, the general ride as nice as what I found in the 1080 V13. So for me, if I was picking, you know, these are definitely two standout cushion shoes that you can buy. For me, just because I think the ride is a little bit nicer, you're getting a lighter shoe as well than the New Balance shoe, I would be going for the 1080 V13. Okay, so there you have it, our multi-test to take on how the New Balance Fresh Foam X 1080 V13 compares to the Asics Gel Nimbus 25. Now, if you want to see any other comparison shoe videos with either of these shoes, do let us know in the comments. As always, like and subscribe hit that little bell to find out about our latest videos. And yeah, we'll see you for the next Run Testers video.